Welcome to the Scale.io Lab demo. First, we will look into the environment. We are using a VMware environment for this particular setup, and we have four VMs for this demo. Three of them are CentOS, and one of them is a Windows machine. All these machines have one terabyte local disk attached on a separate SCSI controller. First, we'll look at the install in a physical Linux environment. I am logged on to the first Linux machine where I've already uploaded the Scale.io software. I just need to modify the package to be executable, and then I can start to extract the software. Using the install Python script, we can now go and configure what the Scale.io installation should look like. I run the script with the make config option. Because this is the first setup, there is no configuration yet, and we need to create one. The password is required to encrypt the passwords within the configuration file. Next, we can configure all the different parts that make up Scale.io. All items in red need to be configured, while the items in green are already configured correctly. We start with the configuration of the MDM. As you can see, the system actually logs into the server and gets the available networking adapters from which we can use. Finally, we configure the tiebreaker and the virtual IP address. And with that, the MDM menu entry now shows green. Next, we add a protection domain to the SDSs. We first add three SDSs, which we configure afterwards. Note how the system again logs into the Linux host, this time to draw the available devices. As we added the one terabyte disk using the separate SCSI controllers, the one terabyte disk shows up as dev SBD. After the third SDS is configured, the menu item also shows green, and we can continue with the configuration of the SDCs. Again, we first add three SDCs, which we configure after the creation. After we've configured all three SDCs, this menu item shows up green as well, indicating we have properly configured the SDCs. Now we configure monitoring. We are adding some default email details just to demonstrate the abilities in here. We can now take a look at the miscellaneous menu item. Here you can configure encryption and a password, which we'll leave disabled for the lab demo. Now we can exit the configuration and save it. When you look at the disk, you'll note that a new file was created, site.config. When we edit this file, we can see the actual configuration we just made. When we now enter the configuration again using the install script, you can see that all the details are now available and that they are drawn out in the site.config file. Now we are ready to install Scale.io on all three VMs using the configuration we just built. The Scale.io install script is completely automatic from here, assuming we have entered the configuration correctly. While Scale.io installs, we can look at the Java-based Scale.io dashboard. The dashboard right now tries to connect to the Scale.io system, but for now is disconnected as there is no Scale.io installation yet. As the install progresses, we can actually see this happening in the dashboard. Scale.io first comes up as a single instance, then as a cluster. As the software installs, it performs a failover and a fail back before it comes up again as a cluster. As the install continues, we can see the SDSs come up. And after that, we can see the system shows the available capacity. As the install finishes, we now see we have three clients and three servers available. Now we can query the cluster. The cluster shows up as being in a clustered state with the tiebreaker online as well. Now we can start to carve out the volumes from the available space within the system. Using the add volume SCLI command, we can create two volumes, one of 100 gigabytes and one of 50 gigs. 
Note that Scale.io always aligns the size on an 8 gigabyte boundary. When you're looking at the dashboard now, you can see the volumes and the space they consume. Note that within Scale.io, the amount of storage consumed is always double from the amount delivered. Now it is actually time to map the volume to the SDCs of the Linux machine so that we can actually use the storage Scale.io delivers. When we query the volumes now, we can see that we have two volumes, vol1 and vol2. And the first volume is connected to our three SDCs, while the second volume is not. Let's create a snapshot. With this command, I snap vol1 into a snapshot I call snap1. The snapshot will also show up in the dashboard. We now have three volumes, of which one is a snapshot. So where did our storage go? If you look at the device list, we now see a device called SCINIA. This is actually the first volume mounted through Scale.io. Let's make this storage usable. First we use FDisk on the volume to create a partition. We create the primary partition with a Linux file system. Then we write out the changes. Next we create the XT3 file system to sit on top of the partition. Finally, we mount the file system to have it available to the Linux machine. Just as a quick demo, we can also mount the snapshot we created on the host. Here you see it pop up in the device list as SCINIB. We will start an installation of the Windows version of Scale.io. In this Windows instance, we will just install the SDS and the SDC. Back in Linux, we will add the Windows instance to our existing Scale.io install. First, we add the SDS. In order to use its locally attached one terabyte disk, we need to assign a drive letter to it without formatting it. We will use the drive letter to tell SDS which disk to use. While the Windows SDS is added, we monitor the Scale.io dashboard. You can see the available storage increasing from 3 terabytes to 4 terabytes. Now the Scale.io system will automatically start to rebalance the system. Now let's power off the third Linux machine. Scale.io will detect the node is down and commence a rebuild. The dashboard shows that one SDC, one SDS, and the tiebreaker is now down. Scale.io will now rebuild across the disks that are still up. Now let's restart the third Linux machine again. It boots very fast. As soon as Scale.io discovers the system is back online again, it will adjust its rebuild strategy accordingly. A rebalance is also taking place to make sure all the data is spread across all the disks again. Looking at the SDCs, you'll notice that the SDC of the Windows host is not added yet. For this, we need to run a drv underscore config or drv underscore cfg in the Windows systems to tell the MDM there is another SDC available.
If we now look at the SDCs again, you see the Windows SDC pop up as well, meaning we can now bring Scale.io storage to the Windows host as well. Let's use our 50 gig volume for this. Back in Windows, we can see the Scale.io volume popped up a new drive. We can bring it online and format it. After formatting, it will immediately be ready for use. Let's look at an install of Scale.io under ESX. For this demo, I have a vCenter environment with three ESX hosts in a cluster. As you can see, each ESX host has one terabyte local SATA drive attached to it. We will use this capacity for Scale.io. As you can see, the first two hosts already have the virtual Scale.io appliance installed. Let's deploy a third appliance for that third host. Give it a name and tell it to install on the third ESX host. While the appliance deploys, let's look at the first virtual appliance that we already configured. You'll note that there is a very similar setup here compared to the previous Linux install. When we start the install script here, note that we add a dash VM to the command line. This will enable some extras within the script. Note the extra options in the menu, SCSI initiators and volumes. Let's first go into the SCSI initiators. As you can see, I've already entered two of them, but the third one is missing, so let's add that one. First, we give the initiator a name, but then we need the SCSI initiator IQN from the ESX server. In order to get this, we need to enable the software iSCSI adapter within ESX if it has not been done already. After the adapter is installed, we can now see a copy of the IQN and paste it into the Scale.io configuration. Finally, we add the volume to the configuration and configure it. We will mount the volume to all three SDCs from all initiators. In the meantime, the virtual appliance will be deployed. Let's start with the appliance and log on. As this appliance is freshly deployed, we need to feed it some primary values such as IP addresses and a host name. Because we do not have a second DNS server in this lab, we're just going to enter zero here. Now we can start to install just like the Linux install we did previously. Note the profile option we specify here, which can tune the install for either spinning disk or SSDs. After the install is complete, the dashboard shows our new Scale.io deployment. When we query all volumes, you can see that the volume has already been created as part of the install script. This is also shown in the dashboard. We have storage, clients, servers, and one volume present. Looking at the ESX environment, we still do not have the volume showing up on the iSCSI adapter. For this to work, we need to rescan the adapters. After rescan, we now see the one volume, 104 gigabytes in size. 
We rescan the second and third ESX hosts as well, but note that the volume does not appear on the third host even though the rescan completed. Let's go into the iSCSI properties and see. As we just enabled the adapter, there is no dynamic discovery configured yet, so let's add one, pointing to the local ScaleIO appliance. You can see the SCSI target was discovered, so a rescan should show the volume now. Now all that remains is creating a data store on the newly discovered volume. After this, the ScaleIO storage is ready to go within ESX. This concludes the ScaleIO lab demo. Thank you very much for your attention.